in this little box is something incredibly interesting for HD Zero. It is a product that has been developed by the community in cooperation with HD Zero. And what it allows you to do is connect multiple cameras to the HD Zero system. This little board allows you to connect up to two cameras to HD Zero, but that isn't actually the limit because you can even daisy chain these boards allowing you to connect two of them together. Now in this video I'm going to give you an overview of this little accessory for the HD Zero system. We're going to take a look at what it can do and then at the very end I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Okay, so this little board is called the HD Zero Camera Switcher. And as I've mentioned, it allows you to connect up to two HD Zero cameras to one VTX. What's really cool about this is the fact that you can not only connect up to two, you can connect two of these boards together, allowing you up to four cameras on the HD Zero system. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why would I want to connect that many cameras to a drone or a plane or a quad and the very basics are whilst most quad users don't need multiple camera angles for planes wings and even ground-based vehicles having multiple camera angles is actually incredibly handy on a plane and a wing having a forward facing and a back facing camera is very good but also you could have a situation where you may want a fixed position FPV camera at the front and then a second camera on a gimbal. What's really nice about this board is the fact that it has been done with some support of HD Zero, which means that you can control the camera switching via the HD Zero VTX. You can configure either Betaflight or iNav to control the switching on this, but don't worry, if you're a user that isn't flying with a flight controller, it still has a manual override as well, allowing you to use it in flight controllerless fixed wing applications. Now, obviously, this board is specifically designed for the HD Zero system, so it is only going to work with HD Zero cameras, and there are a few rules that you do need to follow when it comes to your choice of HD Zero cameras as well. However, it really is a very simple and straightforward solution to giving you multi-camera capability on the HD Zero system. As I said earlier, this board was actually designed by a couple of members of the FPV community, AVI Physics, as well as Here Comes Whitney, and they had some support from Jeff on the VTX firmware, as well as Carl at HD Zero, who is very kindly doing the manufacturing of this board for the guys. Now, looking around it, you can see it is fairly straightforward. We've got a couple of MIPI connections for our cameras and our VTX. So we've got a camera one and a camera two port. We've then got our VTX port, which is as labeled. That sends the signal down to our VTX. We've then got some pads over here. These pads are the manual input pads if you want to control it manually. These pads support 0 to 3.3 volt for switching. And then You've got a couple of other pads which are configuration pads depending on what mode you want to use the board in. So for instance, in the standard mode as you get it, you would control it via the HD Zero VTX in Betaflight or iNav, but then you can configure it to be manually controlled or you can set it into like a pass-through mode allowing you to put two of these boards together. Having spoke to the guys who designed it at the moment, they have only tested it up to two boards. So whilst you can daisy chain up to four cameras, it hasn't been tested beyond that. That isn't to say it couldn't work with more than two boards, but it is two boards. Father and son is as far as they've gone with it so far. Looking around the rest of the board, we have a couple of status LEDs in the middle of our smiley face. And then on the back of the board, you have some other solder pads, which you use for configuration, depending on the mode that you're using it in. Size wise, the board is 26 mil by 26 mil square with a 20 by 20 mounting pattern. And the weight of the board comes in at just 3.2 grams. 
When it comes to compatibility with the HD0 system, everything is fairly straightforward. First of all, it will only work with the digital HD0 cameras. It's not going to work with the newer ultra lightweight small cameras that we've seen for the likes of the AIO5, the AIO15. With regards to standard VTX support, it should work with all of them as long as they have the latest relevant firmware that supports the board. When it comes to the cameras though, there are a few rules that you do need to follow. The board will work with the V1 Micro, the V1 Nano, the V2 Micro, the V2 Nano and the light camera, the V3 Micro, as well as the V3 Nano, as well as the Nano 90. But when you're peering cameras up, they do need to be cameras of the same generation. So for instance, you can use two V1 micros or two V1 nanos or a V1 micro and a V1 nano. You can use V2 micro, V2 nano or a light, but what you shouldn't do is use say a V2 micro and a V3 micro. You need to stick within the same generation of camera to ensure that everything works as expected. Just one other thing to mention is that you do also have to make sure the cameras are in the same mode. You can't have one in say 4x3 and another in 16x9. They do both need to match. Okay, now just to demo this on the bench, we've got the HT0 monitor, we've got a Race Vision 1 VTX connected to the camera board, and then we've got a micro and a nano camera, and that is then connected to our flight controller via our normal UART. There is no special wiring for this other than our traditional UART setup, so we've got power, TX, RX, there is no additional wires, it is simply just that. When it comes to the configuration of this in, say, iNav or Betaflight, this is very straightforward. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you've got the VTX connected up as normal via MSP DisplayPort. So that means you're getting your normal OSD. It is all working as expected. Then, under your mode selection, you simply need to configure the camera control one mode to a switch on your radio. There is no other configuration other than this. You can see at the moment, we've got camera control one on AUX3 and set to high. And this is what allows Betaflight and iNav to switch between the different camera modes. So I'm going to power up the flight controller, which you can see then powers up the VTX and the camera board. We've got a little light that's now appeared. And then you can see on the screen, the camera is showing. I've got the micro camera connected on port one. And then on my radio, I'm going to just flick my switch one more time. Boom. You can see there. And we've now swapped over to the camera two, which is the camera up here on the stand. I've just realized that it's actually upside down. So let's swap that around whilst we're doing it. There we go. So you can now see we are on that top camera there. And then I can flick the switch. And you can see we swap back to the original camera. Now that switching, you can see that there is a bit of a fuzz whilst you do the switching. So if I flick between it, you can see there, it's less than a second, but there is a little bit of a downtime, half a second, something like that between the switching. It seems a little bit quicker going from camera one to camera two than it is going back to camera one but it really is as simple as that. Just something to know on the switch in time, this will vary depending on the synchronization state of the camera. In my bench testing, there are times where I found the switching is incredibly quick, almost non-noticeable. And then there are other times where it extends out to being a little bit longer. I don't feel this is going to be a great problem in the field. It is something I know the guys are aware of, and it will depend on the choice of cameras you're using and their synchronization state. The basics are making sure all of the camera settings and generations are the same will help aid with the synchronization speed when switching. When switching camera, you'll also notice that the LED on the board switches as well. So green for camera one and red for camera two. Just something to mention is the fact that switching between cameras has no impact on your DVR. Even if you're recording in auto mode, switching between the cameras does not cause any stopping or starting of recording. It simply carries on as if the VTX was connected as normal. When it comes to the camera settings and modes, there are a few things that you need to be aware of. 
If you have the correct pairing of cameras, you do have the ability to independently set things such as brightness, contrast, like I will show you in a minute. However, if you don't have the right pairing, you may be able to adjust the settings on one of them, but not the second channel. Also, it is worth noting that the cameras also have to be in the same mode as well. So, for instance, if you're in 4x3, both cameras need to be 4x3, 16x9, just so everything aligns. So, here, I'm going to switch over to the first camera that you can see there. And I'm just going to go into the camera settings. And what I'm going to do on this one, which is actually the second camera... I'm going to go into the brightness and I'm going to set this really, really bright. So I'm going to move that up so you can see that that is having an effect. You can see that the image has gone brighter. I'm going to slam the contrast up on that as well. Slam up the saturation. Just to demonstrate that I have actually adjusted the camera settings. Click save. And then that one is now saved in. If I then flick back to the other camera, you can see that this is still on its original settings. So this one's on the bright settings. This one's on its original ones. I can then go back into this one. And instead on this one, I'm going to set the values as lower. Just so I can demonstrate that there is a difference between the camera settings that we're saving. But what it does mean is with the correct peering you do have the ability to have some slightly different configuration between the cameras, depending what you're doing. What you can't do, though, is have different modes. So you can't have one on 4x3 and one on 16x9. You need to keep the modes the same on the cameras. So, as you've seen, the board gives you some real nice little capabilities. Now, price-wise, these boards are going to be available for about $30. Obviously, you're also going to need to get your cameras as well as your MIPI cables as well. Functionality on the MIPI cables will vary depending on length. You might need to have a bit of a play, but I do know it's been tested with the longer MIPI cables as well. And it's really great to see another nice new option for the HD zero system and i'm looking forward to seeing what people are going to be able to do with this i haven't had a great deal of ability to test it in the real world simply because of the weather here at the moment but it really is a very nice option for the hd zero system and i will put a link to it below in the description so that is it from me on this one. I hope you have found this video interesting. There will be links to it down in the description. I want to say a big thank you to the guys for sending this over to take a look at. And finally, I just want to say if you're interested in seeing more about the HD Zero system, there will also be links to the HD Zero goggles. There's also a playlist for HD Zero as well. And finally, if you'd like to support the channel, please consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.